Yeah, obviously, uh, really excited to be here. Uh, we've had a great week <clears throat> from a preparation standpoint. Uh, PlayStation Fiesta Bowl has been, been first class in every way possible, and, and our guys have really enjoyed it. I've been very impressed with our players and staff. You know, we talk all the time about bowl games are about being present and, um, you know, enjoy, you know, the time that they have doing the different types of things like top golf and things like that. But when it's time to meet and practice and work hard, they got to be able to be mature enough to flip the switch back and forth. And our guys have seemed to handle it really well. I think part of it is the motivation of playing a great team uh, like the University of Washington. Um, you know, our, our staff has tremendous respect for, for Coach Peterson's staff. Uh, we were able to have a function with them the other night. It was great to interact with those guys and have some fun. But um, I have known Coach Peterson now for several years and and then um, obviously have followed his career. And, and we have some mutual uh, friends, you know, so got tremendous respect for him and what he's been able to do in his career. <clears throat> Got tremendous respect for the University of Washington, uh, and just like Coach, you know, you know, looking at the statistics, the statistics, they tell a story. But the most important thing is the film, and, and watching the film um, is exciting in some ways, and uh, and challenging in a lot of other ways. Um, you know, just watching a really good opponent on the team, uh, excuse me, on the tape, compete week in and week out. So, um, you know, our guys are motivated and excited. And I think it's going to be a great game, and um, you know, we look forward. The opportunity. Hi, Matt Martell, Daily Collegian. So this one's for both of you guys, and I wanted to ask, when you have two teams that are so similar in pretty much all three phases of the game as far as a production standpoint, what are the keys to winning when you, you know, do you just try to beat them in the same thing that you're good at, or is it more of there are certain things you have to do well to win? Well, I guess what, what I would say is, you know, whenever you're studying film and statistics and things like that on your opponent, obviously you're, you're trying to figure out what their strengths are and, and come up with a game plan to try to minimize those strengths as much as you possibly can. And then you're looking for weaknesses and, um, and how can you take advantage of some of those weaknesses. But I think, you know, your point is a good one. When you watch, you know, Washington on film, you know, they uh, statistically, as well as what you see on film, you know, they play really good football kind of across the board, you know, uh, defensively, offensively, special teams. Um, you know, you don't see a team that is is dominant in one area and lacking in another. They're, you know, they're really pretty much good across the board. So I think at the end of the day for us, in these types of games, it's probably always like this, but in these types of games, it, even more so, you know, it, it, it's going to come down to fundamentals. It's going to come down to blocking, tackling, uh, protecting the football, um, you know, not giving up big plays on defense, um, you know, trying to create a few of them on offense, momentum type plays. Uh, and, you know, that's that's typically the case, you know, is, is you know, playing good sound football, not doing the things that they're going to be in. And those things have a tendency to show up in, in bowl games because you haven't played for a couple weeks. You know, special teams are usually really important and, you know, ball security is really important. So, you know, for us, you know, I know our players and our coaches have tremendous respect for Washington for what we've seen and what we've game planned. And at the end of the day, it's, it's going to come down to the team that plays the hardest and plays the smartest and, um, you know, and finds a way to finish. You know. <laughs> That's it. He said it. Yeah, I, I will say one last thing, though, is one of the things I think is interesting about this game is one of the things I've seen across the country now is with some of these bowl games is you have teams that had certain expectations and then they get to the bowl game and maybe one team is really excited about playing in that game and the other team maybe isn't. And I think although both both of our programs have been a part of you know national championship discussions you know, over the last last couple of years and, and, and they were in the playoffs. Um, I do feel like both teams are really excited about this opportunity and playing in this game. Um, you know, this is a tremendous opportunity, a tremendous game. So I think you got two teams that are playing really well that both were a part of these types of conversations and are both highly motivated to play in this game. So I think it's a it's a great, you know, it's a great opportunity for football fans across the country and I think it's it's a great opportunity for both of our organizations. Ditto. We're going to go here with Greg. Uh, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. We'll start with Coach Peterson on this one, but I'd love to hear uh, from Coach Franklin also. What is it that you see in your counterpart that makes him successful? 
Well, I think I think Coach Franklin covered it. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I mean, I, I think it's when, when you're going to play a team, you know, in, in this type of game, you're going to get a really good opponent, and it's not going to be any one thing. It's going to be everything. It's going to be offense, defense, and special teams. I mean, you got, you know, they got elite returners, and their defense is like, I think the thing that's interesting about their defense is, um, you know, they got, they got they kind of got those star, star power na names on offense. You know, the offensive guys always sell the tickets. But you have, you watch them play as a defense, and there's not any one guy that has this huge name out there because they're all making tackles. And that's what I think like a good defense does. It's not any one or two guys that keep showing up. It's like they're all getting a piece of this thing. And I think that's one of the things that really makes a defense special. And I think they got that. And obviously they're, you know, you guys know about the offense but I think that's what it is it's balanced across the board and balanced in a really good way I, I would say the same thing you know uh... The, the things that probably jump out to us that you know, keep me up at night a little bit is, is their punt returner. You know, obviously the, the amount of big plays, the amount of success that he's had, um, you know, is concerning. Uh, their running back is probably as, is as, as explosive as the running back that we've seen this year. Uh, they got a veteran quarterback who throws for a really high percentage and doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. Um, you know, and then defense. Defensively, I think it's obviously their interior defensive tackles. Um, you know, you got six foot five, three hundred and forty pounds, and six foot three, three hundred and twenty-three pounds, and and they play like it. Um, and then I think they do a really good job of complementing those two interior D tackles with what they do on the perimeter with their with their secondary. Those guys do a great job of defeating blocks and fitting runs and playing what we call trap coverage, where they'll trigger the corners and things. Things like that and make it really difficult. So now, you know, you, you have challenge. You have a challenge. You know, run the ball inside on them, and then you know the perimeter game. You know, because of what they do in the secondary, causes challenges there. So, uh, just like Coach Peterson, you know, said, a very balanced team that does a lot of things well. You you don't have this type of success that they've had. You know, with you know with just relying on, on one area, and um, you know, the offense, defense, and special. Special teams all all is going to be some challenges for us and you know I do think that our guys have done a pretty good job this year of of us being very honest you know, with our players and say look here, here's some of the challenges and we need to make sure at the end of the game that you know the the stuff that we've identified as, as, as being issues in the game we're not talking about it after the game saying it, it, it got us you know so you know it's going to be a challenge there's no doubt about it but I know our guys are excited about the opportunity and um, you know it should be fun for everybody we got a Joe here on the left hand side in the aisle <laughs> Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer for James. Uh, you referenced the Washington defense, but I was wondering if you could talk specifically about uh, the disruptive nature of Vita Villa and what he presents uh, as a challenge to your attack. Yeah, um, you know, I, I saw him the other night and had a conversation with him about, you know, it probably makes sense for him to just declare to the NFL now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, he's he's a tremendous player, you know, tremendous player, you know. Um, he, you talk about stuff that you can't coach. Six foot five, three hundred and forty pounds. That's all coaching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Six foot five, three hundred and forty pounds. Uh, you can't move them. You know, you're trying to get double teams and 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 be able to get push up to the second level like everybody is. Um, and what happens is either he's able to make the play at the line of scrimmage by really you know, creating a stalemate and then ditching the guy at the last second and making the tackle. Or, you know, the other thing that's that's so advantageous having guys like that inside is it puts the linebackers in a great situation because those defensive linemen are not getting pushed into their face, um, or you know they're they're never able to come off on the linebacker at the next level. So it, it allows the linebackers to be free hitters, and everybody on offense is trying to create space, and everybody on defense is trying to take space away, and you know, they've done a great job of that. But I think you know, you know, the game of football. 
on defense, in, in my opinion, kind of starts as kind of built like a baseball team. You want to be strong through the middle, catcher, pitcher, you know, shortstop, second base, center field. And you, you look at them, that's that's kind of how they are, you know, with those two D tackles and their linebackers, um, you know, very, very challenging. And then I think the thing that's been unique to me is, you know, what they've been able to do at the nickel position. Um, you know, different body types, different styles the last couple of years, but those guys have been really, really productive for them. And, um, you know, I think I mentioned to you guys earlier, I read an article, you know, earlier in the year before we knew we were playing them that I thought was really interesting, just talking about their defense and that nickel position and how much how much production they've gotten out of it the last couple of years. So, uh, trust me, we, we've, we've talked about him all week long. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, it's it's something that our guys are motivated for. But as you know, you know, we, we, we haven't consistently run the ball inside this year you know, the way we'd like to. So that was a big emphasis for us. Um, you know, this week, you know, this week and, and really the last month, you know, in preparing for this game. We have time for one or two more. We're going to go here to start. Uh, Larry Stone, Seattle Times. This is for Coach Peterson. Uh, Chris, similar to the first question for Coach Franklin, you have a senior class now that's been with you kind of through, through the whole time. Uh, what have they meant to the development of the program? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think Coach Franklin said it, you know, in terms of cultural, cultural drivers. You don't get anything done unless you got a great locker room. You know, you can have all kinds of players. I think we've all been through that, having a bunch of really good players and getting nothing done. And so that's probably the thing we're most proud of, of those guys just really kind of getting what we're all about and really getting it and being all in and from how we practice to how we do everything. And, you know, when you have a new crew come in, there's a lot of ways to be successful. And, and sometimes it's really hard for young guys to f to figure that out. You know, why are we doing the things this way when we were having some pretty good success the other way? And for those guys to be figure that out and make the switch and grow through that, it's hard. It's hard for anybody, let alone young kids that were rec recruited under a different, you know, philosophy. And so we wouldn't be here without those guys. Right here. Uh, this is for Coach Peterson. I'm Corey Geiger from the Altoona Mirror. It's been more than 10 years since the Ian Johnson play at you know, the Fiesta Bowl. You mentioned your current players may not care a whole lot about that, but that play, that game, that win ha has such great history here and in college football. Is that play brought up to you a lot? What do you see when you uh, see it on replay, and what did it mean? And then that game, what did that mean to your career? Yeah. Um... You know, it's interesting. After the game went down, we, we really tried to spend a lot of time moving on from because that's all anybody wanted to talk about. And, uh, you know, we really wanted to move our team forward and not live in the past. And so for probably three or four years, people bring it up and we just actually act like it didn't happen. But didn't hear the question. Move on. I don't get it quite as much. You know, I think you look back in your career at certain games and, you know, really appreciate things that have happened. But I've said this before. You know, everybody likes to talk about that first Fiesta Bowl. The T I was maybe more proud of our second Fiesta Bowl win against TCU that, you know, those were two really good teams and TCU was really, really good. And for us to win that game, I was just equally, if not more proud of our team, but nobody spoke about it as much as because there wasn't wedding proposals and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But it was, uh, they were both really, really awesome times to be at this, at this site in this, this game. We'll go real quick up here and then we'll take our pictures. Uh, Mark Wogenrich, Allentown, Coach Franklin. This is kind of a similar question to that. What do you want your guys to know about the 87 Fiesta Bowl? I know you talk about balancing history and and today, but that, like uh, the Fiesta Bowl with Boise State, is a real iconic moment in Penn State history. What do you want these guys to know about that moment in, in their history? Well, you know, I think at Penn State, we have a we have a program and a university and a community that really embraces our history and traditions. Um, you know, Coach P, we did a we did a throwback um, alternate uniform this year, and you know we, we put a number on the helmet and we put a stripe on the pants, and our Penn State people were like. Ah! 
felt like like it was like craziness, you know. And, and people nationally were like, "You didn't do anything," <laughs> you know. Um, so you know, our, our guys get pounded uh, about the history and the traditions uh, from every angle possible. So we don't really spend a whole lot of time talking about it. Um, our, our guys understand it, you know, throughout our facility. They they see it and they feel it you know, all the time. You know, the Lettermen are such a big part of our, our program. We we probably had probably had ten Lettermen at practice yesterday. That that some live locally and some that have flew in from all over the country. You know. Um, the 1987 Fiesta Bowl, our, our guys weren't even alive, you know, and, and, and these guys, most of them, you know, that their memories are football or when football really became significant to them is in like eighth and ninth grade. So that's where I think the, the recent success that we've been having um, is, is really, you know, putting Penn State back on, you know, you know, the minds of, of football fans across the country and, and, and recruit across the country and you know uh, I think we're playing an exciting brand of football which helps as well so you know our, our guys understand and they take a lot of pride in our history and in our traditions but but we're you know we're really just focused on this team and and, and the University of Washington and and getting prepared to play well on Saturday and you know talking about the Fiesta Bowl uh, from 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 back then it, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of value for what we're trying to do today. You know, we respect our history and we embrace the traditions, but you know, we're really focused on you know what we can do to to play the best we possibly can against a great Washington opponent.